Make it personal. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord, you're so worthy of glory. You're so worthy. Oh. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. I'm back. Please take your seat if you can find your seat. There's nobody like Jesus. There is absolutely nobody like him. And you can't help but get touched because you're singing about the real God. And I don't care who you are, where you go in this world, his love has been made available to you. If you could only receive that amazing, amazing love. In your hearing, brothers and sisters, please. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us, there is but one God, Amen. the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. I just read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 4 through 6. The Gallup poll, brothers and sisters, did a 2017 study of how many people on the earth uh, that believe in God. They ask the question, do you believe in a higher power? Do you believe that there is a deity higher than yourself? And in that 2017 Gallup poll, it was discovered that 87% of human beings on the world believe that there is a God. Amen. Now, I found it quite striking because their belief in God, 87% of the world then we would see a different world if they were believing correctly. But everywhere you go and everywhere you look, you see the travails of man. You see the trouble of man. You see the tribulations of man. You see the hatred and the, the cruelty mankind has toward his brother. 
but yet and still 87% of the population in the world say they believe in God. Of this 87%, 2.3 billion of those claim to be of the Christian faith. 2.3 billion claim to be of the Christian faith. In the Muslim faith, there are 1.8 billion believers. 1.8. Of the Hindus, there's 1.2 billion believers. And the Buddhists, there's a mere 535 million that say they believe in the Hindu gods. Since belief in God and in and of itself is, is not enough to have a relationship with God. Did you hear me? And I just read to you from God's holy word in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 how the Bible even denotes that there are many gods, many lords. But we who are in the know know that there's only really one true God. The Bible suggests in James chapter number 1 that it's not enough just to believe in God or that there's a higher power. Mm -hmm. For James 2 and 19 suggests, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and they tremble, the Bible tells us. So even the devils believe that there is a God. The question then becomes, brothers and sisters, is how do we know we are believing in the right God? And how do we know we are believing the right way? Do you know, brothers and sisters, that there is a way acceptable to God whereby he will receive us? And then there is an unacceptable way to believe in the one true and living God. Psalm 81 and 9, listen to this. There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. God says, I will not allow you to worship any other God but me. Amen. We have seen that the scriptures suggest that there are many gods in the world. And I found out in the Old Testament, God told Moses, you tell the children of Israel to forget about everything they learned in Egypt. Because what they were worshiping were devils. It is highly possible and probable to be worshiping or believing in God from the perspective of devils. Is anybody here? And it says the reason because the Bible says that devils believe in God and the devil being the devil, the manipulator, the liar and the deceiver that he is. He wants to get as many people in the world believing in God because it's innate in human to know that there is a God the way God made us. The breath of life that we, he breathed into Adam and Adam became a living soul is the God part. You and I have received the God part. Our spirit and our soul comes from God. And because our spirit and our soul comes from God, we know that there is a God. All I know through years and through a lot of manipulations and a lot of false theory and a false ideology, people are trying to do away with the concept of God. But in human, in the real human, the one who is longing to know the truth, there is a Noah inside of you that says there is a God. Which is why 87% of the world's population says that there is. But 87% of the population don't know the real God. Amen. Is anybody with Pastor? Uh, I've talked about the, uh, the, 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 the largest religions in the world, Christianity. 2.3 billion, and, I, and out of that 2.3 billion, brothers and sisters, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but a large part of those that say they are Christians are really not Christian. And when we look at the Muslim religion, the same holds true. And we, we look at the Hindu religion, the same holds true. And we look at Buddhists, the same holds true. A lot of people profess that their belief in God is directed towards a certain religion when they themselves are not adhering to the standard of that religion. But brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, I believe in Jesus. And, and I want to submit to you, if I can today, for a little while, why we believe in Jesus Christ. 
The first religion, brothers and sisters, that God gave, the first and only religion that God communicated to man was the religion of blood atonement. Say the religion of blood atonement in your heart. Now this is amazing to me, but in God's dealing with man, he had, and we are in the sixth dispensation, but he has seven dispensations that he is working with man about this thing we call God. A dispensation, and you know what it is, it just simply means a stewardship of law. It's the rules, regulations, and laws prescribed by God to humanity in that period in time, right. that age in which they live. Uh huh. And so initially we had the dispensation of innocence. And then after that, the dispensation of conscience. And of course, we know about the dispensation of human government instituted by Noah. And, and then after the dispensation of human government, we have the dispensation of promise, Abraham. And in the dispensation of promise, God bears to light what he had given through every dispensation. And through every dispensation, God had always given the religion of blood atonement. He had always presented the gospel. That's the reason why you read over there in the book of Galatians where it says that God preached the gospel to Abraham. And you go a little further in 1st and 2nd Peter, you see where the Bible called Noah a preacher of righteousness or a preacher of the gospel. I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that the only religion, the first religion that God ever communicated to man, he gave to them at the moment of his sin, Amen. the moment of his fall. That's when God gave the true and only religion. And so to understand this, you move past the dispensation of promise into the dispensation of law. And now we are living in what we term the dispensation of grace. And brothers and sisters, the, 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 the religion of blood atonement, the religion that God gave to the first man at the very beginning, the first man that ever existed was Adam. And the Bible says that when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, God showed up immediately and instituted the law, the new dispensation, the dispensation of innocence, that which the gospel would be administered to all humanity. And if you believe in the gospel, or in other words, if you believe in blood atonement, you can be made in right standing with God. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, if I can... And you all know this to be so. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. We all understand that sin is a problem. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Now, we talked about the Muslims, the 1.8 billion. Did you know uh, that the Muslims believe in Taba, T-A-W-B-A-H? And it's a method of repenting and turning to God through a moral chaste lifestyle. Change your life, and then you can be made in right standing with God. I found that without the true God, there's no way you can really change your life. Because the Bible says that if anybody's in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things are passed away. You cannot be changed until you meet the true God. You don't attempt to change first and then hope to find the God. No, 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 no. But, but they say that you repent and turn to God through a moral and chaste lifestyle. And they only believe that Jesus was a good prophet, much like Adam or much like Job or much like anybody else, thus nullifying the atoning work of the cross. So to put it in layman's terms, they don't believe in the atonement. They don't believe in repentance of sin. Not really. Hindus... You know, they don't even need atonement. They say that everything is based off of karma. Your good karma, your bad karma. There are some good things you do, and because of the good things you're going to do, you're going to receive good for them. But the bad things you do, you're going to receive bad for those things. I got a problem with that. I like the gospel that I believe because... I was a wretch. I was a rank sinner. I'm so glad I don't get what I deserve. Well, 
Buddhism, they just cut to the chase. They say, we don't believe in sin at all. There's no such thing as sin to the Buddhists. The Buddhist's life in itself is above sin. Your rights, your wrongs. There's no such thing as sin. Mm -hmm. But the religion of blood atonement is the religion that God gave to man. This is how I know that all the other religions are wrong. They don't believe in blood atonement. They have, they have nothing in their tenet of faith that even suggests remotely a dying for sin. Is anybody here? And sin is a problem. You must admit to yourself that this whole world is jacked up. <laughs> and if the world was right with God, it wouldn't be so jacked up. But because the world is jacked up, we know that the world has fallen from grace. It's fallen from its relationship with the true and living God. In Genesis, we'll take our text now. And I want you to see Genesis chapter number three. We're all familiar with the story of Adam and Eve eating from the tree that God forbid them not to eat of. The dispensational law that God gave him. You can have everything else, but of this particular tree, you cannot eat. The day you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. That is the dispensational law given in the age of innocence. Given in the dispensation of innocence. And of course, Adam broke that law. And when he broke that law, he plunged all of humanity into sin. And here's where we are, brothers and sisters, directing your attention now to the remedy for it all. God shows up after this incredible fall. And he begins to tell the culprits like it is. I like it because when God preaches, he tells it like it is. He don't sugarcoat it. He don't water it down. He just put it out there so you can see it. He don't tell you when you got a big golf ball size cancer in your brain that you just got a headache. He says there's a golf size cancer in your brain. If we don't cut it out, you're going to die. That's the kind of surgeon I want to see. God doesn't sugarcoat it and water it down. I noticed that the world don't like true preaching. I've noticed that. I noticed that they don't really like the things that bring you into relationship with the real God. Oh, sin is nasty. Oh, yes, it is. Sin is disgusting. Sin is a thing that, 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 that God hated and abhorred so much that he said, I got to do something about it. In Genesis 3 and 15, brothers and sisters, we see God pronouncing judgment through the language of double reference. And if you've been around scripture long enough, you know what the language of double reference is. It is simply when two different uh, uh, beings are being approached. It appears that God is speaking to one, but actually he's speaking to two people. He's speaking to the individual and he's speaking to the spirit and the force behind the individual that's making the individual do what he does. Right. Is anybody here? Amen. And when God pronounces judgment on all the culprits that cause the fall of man, he is not going to leave the major culprit out. Right. Especially when we find out what is involved here. And I will put enmity, verse 15 says, God is speaking. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. The law of devil reference says that you can apply to that individual that is being spoken to that which applies to him. And that which couldn't possibly apply to him must be applied to somebody else. Here in the Garden of Eden, God is pronouncing judgment not only on the serpent, but he's pronouncing judgment on the force behind the serpent, the devil. Here in the Garden, we have what theologians term the Proto-Evangelion. The Proto-Evangelion from two 
two, 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 two Hebrew words, protos, meaning first, and evangelium, which means the good news of the gospel. The first mention of the gospel, the first mention of the good news is found here in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He says, I'm telling you, devil, you're going to be permitted to bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise your head. Your authority, Satan, that you think you've wrestled away from man is going to be wrestled back away from you. Can I get a witness? Here in this glorious account, right at the fall of man, right when man disobeys God and plunges the whole world into sin and darkness, God shows up and says, oh, you have failed miserably. You have no idea what you've just done. You have set the, the world on a course of destruction and death and pain such like has never been experienced. You have transferred the authority that I've given you to the authority of the devil. And because of that, the world is going to be in a big trouble. So he pronounces the judgment. Woman, you're going to have to, to bear the children with pain and suffering. Serpent, you're going to have to go on your belly. Adam, curse is the ground for thy sake. Out of the dust you were taken. And to the dust you shall return. Amen. You're going to die now. But the one who's responsible, who's sitting back watching the proceedings with glee, happy about his plan being brought to success. He's looking and he, he's thinking that he's going to skate by. I have deceived man. Man is my subject. God cannot move against me unless he moves against man. Amen. I got God in a catch-22. He can't put me in hell without putting my subjects in hell. Amen. Oh, there's an issue. There's a problem. The plan of God has been averted. Satan, it appears, has tied the hands of God and is the universe, is the earth stuck in this dismal situation of death, the grave, and hell. What will God do next? God being God is always 10 steps ahead. No, 10,000 steps ahead. No, 10 million, no, 10 zillion, no, 10 billion, no, 10 trillion, no, 10. He says, Satan, you think you, you, you deceived us. You didn't think that we had an alternative solution if you caused him to fall. We were testing him to see what he would do. You didn't think, you thought that just your one victory right there would just corner us and we would be forever bound to allow you to do what you want to do when you wanted to do it. <laughs> no, somebody done told you wrong. Right. Woo, I'm getting happy. Y'all going to have to help me. Hold it. Say, Pastor, hold it down. Give us the word first. Uh, but you see, I got the Holy Ghost and I get happy because the Holy Ghost starts registering all of this fact in my being. And I know, uh, well, Proof that the first religion is given here, or uh, the proto evangelium, uh, the first mention of the gospel is here in Genesis 3.15, right at the fall, right when the first man falls. There's nobody else but Adam and Eve. So any religion after this is probably going to be, uh, can I just tell you, a religion of a devil. Uh, Y'all ain't going to like me, but... We got to find out what this religion of blood atonement is. Come on now. See, you can see it. It's right here in your eyes. I want you to watch. Look at verse 22 in the same chapter 3. Are you here? Or verse 21, rather. You there? Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Now, I want to show you 
you knowing the character of God, God doesn't just arbitrarily do things. God has purpose. Everything has purpose. God has plan. The skins that clothed Adam and Eve, brothers and sisters, were from the animals that God taught Adam and Eve to perform blood atonement with. Get the picture. God said, okay, because you've sinned. Now, I'm introducing true religion. I'm going to come. I'm going to, I'm going to bleed and die and shed my blood on the cross for your sins. That's what God says. But until that time, you need to practice the blood of uh, the, the religion of blood atonement in, in type, in symbology, so that my, my, my wrath won't come upon you uh, because my wrath will not tolerate sin. And so my wrath must be, it must be appeased. And, and to appease my wrath and appease judgment, only, mm, only the religion of blood atonement will suffice. Don't you tell me about reaching certain dimensions in my mind and changing my cult and changing my karma and, and my, uh, the transformation of me in, inwardly to make me something that God didn't make me. That will not work. The only thing acceptable to God is the religion of blood being shed. So we see here he makes the coats of skins and clothes them. And I know that this is so through spiritual scripture deduction. Because the very next chapter, matter of fact, a few verses later, we see in Genesis chapter four and in your in your hearing. And Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have given a man from the Lord. I've gotten a man from the Lord. And, and she again bare his brother Abel and. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And, and in the process of time, mm, uh-huh, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. This is the first time you see written in scripture where an offering is being presented to the Lord. Cain brings another type of religion. God, I think you should just accept me because I'm offering what I'm offering. And, and you should just accept my mind and accept my heart. This is what I want to give you. And, and if this is what I want to give you, you ought to accept what I'm trying to give you. But that isn't the way that God taught Adam and Eve. When he clothed them when they were in their sin. See, that's what the, a blood atonement does. It clothes us. It clothes us in righteousness. It clothes us in innocence. It makes us right before God. That's why them songwriters sing, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. And, and so we see here now that Cain didn't get the lesson right. And I'm afraid that some of you that have been raised in Christianity, you're trying to find something different now. You, you're, you're being swayed by the cunning of other men and their philosophy and their fable uh, because you refuse to line up with true Christianity. I told you, you could have been born Baptist. You could have been baptized Catholic. You could have been baptized Methodist or Christian affiliation. But that does not make you a Christian. Come on, say preach, Pastor. Elder Plummer gave me off last week. I feel refreshed. Now, Cain brings of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel, he also brought of the first fruit of the flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. There's a difference. One of these offerings, one of these sacrifices was exactly like God taught Adam and Eve to sacrifice. The very first religion God ever gave to man was the religion of blood atonement. I need 
some blood shed. You ever heard the saying, you can't get blood from a turnip? Brought it from the field, but it didn't work. Because when God looked at it, God said, that don't look nothing like what I'm about to do. Don't you dare sell my blood out cheaply. Compared with other things, compared with silver and gold and man-made manufacturing things, idols. No, don't you dare compare my blood. Well, he had respect to Abel's offering because Abel's offering resembled blood atonement. There has to be blood shed. Is anybody still listening? Isaiah 33 and 22 states, for the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. I want you to see, brothers and sisters, that blood atonement is the only religion that's acceptable to God. What does the word say? Well, quickly. I want to take a walk and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring you right back. But I want to take a walk because I, I, I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that Jesus is the only legal atonement for sin. Amen. And, and, and if I can, I, I, I'm, it's going to go kind of quick, but you, you just stay with me because I, I, I feel like I've got to give you some support because what they're telling y'all is wrong. They're telling you just believe in your heart. Believe what in your heart? What are you believing? 87% of the world is believing something. But we got all these wars. We got all this suffering. In Leviticus 17, look at what God says. Now, Genesis, and, and I want to make sure that I, I, I bring this to your attention. Genesis is one of five books of the law, the Torah. And all Torah means, brothers and sisters, it just means the teaching of the law. That's what it means, the Torah, the teaching of the law. So when you look at Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, when you look at those books, those five books are God giving the law. God saying, I'm a legal God. These are things that I must have man live by. That's the reason why Cain sacrificed was not acceptable. Amen. And so when you get into Leviticus, another book of the law, you see this. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Yeah. What you talking about? Yeah. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Yes. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. Yeah. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. All right. Exhibit A, we see yet another scripture supporting the religion of blood atonement. Yeah. The only religion given to man. Yes, now I want to ask you why you got your thinking caps on. Does the Hindu religion mirror the blood of atonement? No. Does the Buddhist religion have anything Re remotely resembling blood atonement? Uh, does the Muslim religion have anything remotely resembling blood atonement? Oh, come on, talk to me. Uh, so, 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 so God says in his law book, life is in the blood. He said, I give it to you on the altar for an atonement for your soul. The only way your soul going to be saved is if some blood is applied. Yes. The only way you're going to have a relationship with me is if some blood is applied. Mm-hmm. I want you to see it. Come on, can we move now? Go to Matthew's Gospel 26, 28. It says, for this is my blood of the New Testament. That's what Jesus said. Which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Jesus said it. He said, my blood that is shed is for the remission of sin. Amen. So when Jesus says here in Matthew, I'm here, he was the one that was prophesying 
about the religion of blood atonement to Adam, to Eve, to the serpent, to the devil in Genesis 3.15. Woo! Come on, say amen. amen. Say preach, pastor. Preach, pastor. Say ain't tired yet. His blood, the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. How about Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7? In whom we have redemption through his blood. Atonement is not through Allah. You can't decide when you get grown. I'm going to try another religion. You have just sealed your fate. And I know the world got y'all twisted up in knots. Telling you that it's more way to God than it's got to be. And, you, you, and, you, and, and, and now all of a sudden, you, you, you're, 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 you're psychoanalyzing yourself and, you're, and you're, you're misconstruing the scripture. How do I feel? Honey, it matters not how you feel. What matters is have you had the blood wash you, cleanse you. That's the reason why you are a child of God. Well, Ephesians 1 and 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And it's a rich grace for God to become man and shed his blood on the cross for our sin. Amen. Is anybody with me? Uh, let's look at another one. Go, go to Hebrews 9. I love this one. Because it, it points to, in, in clear, vivid language, the religion of blood atonement. Amen. Come on, talk to me. Amen. The religion of blood atonement. When you say the gospel, what you're really saying is blood atonement. All right, now, if you're there, say, Pastor, I'm there. Now, if you're there, I want you to find verse, come on, say amen. Amen. Let's, let, let's do this. Let's. Let's back up a little taste, if that's all right with you. Can, can we back up a little taste? And back up to verse 18. Chapter 9, verse 18. Is that all right? All right, look at this. The Bible says, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Do you see that? In other words, the law was given and the law for man to have right standing with God is that you've got to have blood shed on your behalf. That's the first testament. Amen. Now the testament that Jesus introduced, the one that we just read about over in Matthew. He says the blood of the New Testament. Ah, oh, somebody. Amen. See, the Old Testament, they had to shed blood so God's wrath wouldn't destroy them then. But the blood could only last seasonally. Because it just wasn't possible for the inadequate blood of bulls and goats and lambs is just an ad There's no way it could, could do the job necessary to totally redeem and save man from his sin. Amen. Verse 19, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Without shedding of blood is no remission. Jesus alone is the legal atonement for the sins of the world. Jesus alone is the true God. Was he delusional when he announced, I am the way, the truth, and the life? No man can come to the Father but by me. Was he delusional when he said, I am the door? 
He says, nobody else that tries to go to God it can come any other way but through me. I am the door. He said, he said, thief and robbers try to enter in other ways, but I'm here to tell you I am the only way. Jesus is the only way. He is the only legal atonement. Jesus is the only one that meets the legal requirements of God. Jesus is the only one that was born a man, born in perfection, born to walk this walk for man and defeat sin on behalf of man. Therefore, he is able to take your sin, my sin, upon himself and nail it to the tree. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. I'm so glad that Jesus hung on a tree. They're twisting people up now. They're telling people now that that was an act of weakness. Your God died. Your God is still dead. I got news for you. That's a sign of strength. He was able to die for all of my sin. All of the sins of the world. And then take your sin and the sins of the world and go to hell in my place. And after three, four days, three, four nights, the Bible says the Holy Ghost resurrected him from the dead. He's alive forevermore. He died on the cross, shed his blood for me, went through temptation for me. The perfect offering, the perfect sacrifice. He is the perfection of the blood atonement that they practiced back in the days of old. There's no other God but Jesus. There's no other way to the Father but through him. Why we believe in Christ. Why we believe in Jesus Christ. A man couldn't do what he did. Yahshua. God with man in a human body. Christ anointed by God to perform the work of atonement. Don't say that about nobody else. Because nobody else is this. Nobody else does this. Nobody else was this. Nobody else is this. Woo. I'm gonna I'm gonna quit preaching. I'm gonna quit preaching to you, but I'm gonna tell you this: why I believe in Jesus. I was dead in my trespasses and sins. Knew I was on a, on my way to a burning devil hell. And you know it ain't it ain't rocket science. You know when you're wrong. You don't want to die because you're not sure. Oh, come on, talk to me. If I'm talking to somebody that's not sure today, I want you to know you can be sure with Jesus. Jesus alone gives our repentance weight because through his cross, we obtain what our repentance is asking for. Repentance and forgiveness of sin. You can't be forgiven if you go through Allah. <laughs> you can't be forgiven if you go through Buddha. Can't be forgiven if you go through Hindu. Can't be forgiven if you go through Confucius. The only way to be forgiven of your sin is through blood atonement and his blood, his righteous blood was shed for our sin. It's impossible for me not to believe on Jesus Christ because I remember what I was before he saved me. I remember how I lived before he saved me. I remember when I was on my way to a devil burning hell, but he came in, translated me out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
I'm on my way to heaven despite my past. You might remember me 40 years ago in my sin. As terrible as they were, I got hope in Jesus. If I repent to him, what he did has the power. I said what he did has the power. If you're in your sin today, you can't figure out where you're going, heaven or hell, there's an answer for you today. It's called Jesus the Christ. Stand to your feet. I know we're doing a bunch of preaching. But the Bible says it's through the preaching of the gospel that salvation is administered to humanity. That's the reason why the Protos Evangelion took place first. The first mention of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel. The first gospel message was preached by the Lord Jesus Christ over 7,000 years ago, thereabouts, to Adam and Eve. He later on found Abraham and Noah. And what about Enoch? Who believed the gospel so much he was so sanctified and saved and filled with the spirit. He got took to heaven alive. <laughs> I'm telling you the religion of blood atonement is the only thing that will save our sin sick soul. But maybe you believe like a a Buddhist. Maybe there's no real rationale for sin. Maybe sin is just a made up moral position instituted by all the religions of the world. I've already told you that every religion doesn't even believe in sin. But whatever your rationale is, know this. You won't see God without Jesus. Amen. You won't see him. And it would be a shame to say you believe in what he did and not experience what he did. Jesus Christ dying on the cross for your sin being buried in the pit for three, four days and three, four nights is a powerful, powerful act. You don't need me to remind you. All you need to do is go back to when he was hanging on the cross. The Bible says that the sky turned to darkness and there was a mighty earthquake in the universe, not just the earth, because something was transforming, something was changing, a life altering way was being made for humanity don't tell me you know who Jesus is and you're still living in your sin you must be born again now let's pray you can be saved today Listen, listen, wait a minute, listen, look at me. There's nothing you did that the blood of Jesus cannot atone for. Nothing. There's nothing you've done. That's how powerful the blood of Jesus was and is. All you need is for that blood to be applied. The blood that Jesus shed for me 
way back on Calvary. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. It's power. How many know what I'm talking about? The blood that Jesus. Come here, Sam. Jesus. Hustle, hustle. Come on, sing it for me, honey. Sing it for me, baby. Come on. Come on, lift your hands, everybody. Way back. Yeah. I can't sing it. Calvary. It's the blood, Sam. That gives me Bow your head right now. If you want to be a Christian, a real Christian, not a professor like 87% of the public, but you want to be a true, genuine believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to repeat after me. I don't want to call you to the altar because they say the six feet rule and I don't want to get in any any hot water but he can reach you right where you are make where you're sitting right now an altar make it an altar right now for your soul do it say Lord Jesus come into my heart make me a new creature I repent of my sin I don't accept the invisible God, the God that I don't know about, the God of no name. But I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I identify that my faith is towards Him, for He alone provided me blood atonement. So I ask now that that blood that was shed be applied to my soul be applied to my spirit. Be applied to my whole being. Make me a new creation. Produce the new birth in my life. I want to be your child. And so I ask this now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come into my heart. Say, say come into my heart. Come on, say, come into my heart. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart. If you only use 5% in this confession, it will not work. If you only use 50% of yourself, it will not work. 95% of yourself will not work. You must present your whole heart. Jesus, save Deliver. Let them not be the same now from this day forward. Now, Father, heal the sick today. Heal the sick. You know who they are. Touch them from the top of their head even to the soles of their feet. Father, everything is loosening up now. Football season has started. Basketball season has started. Baseball season. 
Restaurants are open. People are going everywhere again. The schools are opening. Lord, the church now is open. But I pray for a special move of your spirit in the church. That healing virtue would go out and touch everyone that walks through these doors. Through all the doors of the churches all over the world. When they go into true houses of worship. Let healing proceed. That there be no cases of COVID. Lord, we ask it now in the mighty name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of fear that would cause people to be timid concerning the house of God and bold about everything else. That is not the, your spirit. It's not the right spirit. So we rebuke the spirit of fear. Give the people assurance in their minds and their hearts. Give them faith that they can worship you the same way they can go to the ball game. That they can worship you. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. As we leave this place, we pray that it not be from your awesome presence. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding rest rule and abide on every heart. Go with them to their respective places. Take them there in peace. And for the weak, give them supernatural insight, wisdom, knowledge, and revelation to walk through every door that you open is my prayer. God bless you. Go in peace.